And at the top of our news feed, violence on film. The new Joker movie, which tells the origin of Batman's nemesis, has not even been released yet, and it's already causing controversy. And it's mostly around the violence in the movie. Now, complaints about violence on screen are common, but this one is happening at arguably a new moment for the culture. The Joker is about a white man who's rejected by society, gets angry, and then goes on to kill people. Now, that's obviously a simplified precy, but people are asking if that's the kind of story we need to be telling right now. The families of people killed in mass shootings say they're concerned. Here's James. Is it just me? Or is it getting crazier out there? Variety calls it deeply troubling. Vice says it's a terrifying realistic window into white terrorism. And Time Magazine slams it as irresponsible idiocy. But the most damning criticism of the new Joker film comes from the families of the victims of the 2012 shooting in Aurora, Colorado. Twelve people were killed when James Holmes opened fire in a cinema during a screening of the Batman film, The Dark Knight. In a letter to Studio Warner Brothers, the victims' families wrote, Joker presents the character as a protagonist with a sympathetic origin story. It gave us pause. You don't listen, do you? And that's the crux of the concerns with Joker. <sighs> Arthur, played by Joaquin Phoenix, is lonely, downtrodden, and bullied. <laughs> Through a combination of mental illness and rage, he becomes the Joker. His violence gives him power, and he inspires others to commit violent acts. A corporation that is making money off of gratuitous violence needs to be taking care of society as well. We want to see um, survivors have the support that they need and funding that they need, just like a vet would. Uh, these people didn't sign up for war, but they've lived through a war. Warner Brothers has responded, saying it has a long history of donating to victims of violence, including Aurora. The company says it's also joined business leaders in recent weeks to lobby policymakers to tighten gun control laws. It's added, Warner Brothers believes that one of the functions of storytelling is to provoke difficult conversations around complex issues, something director Todd Phillips agrees with. Well, I think it's saying something not necessarily about mental illness, but about treatment of people that have mental illness. So I think it's saying that, you know, you can't really ignore a problem. You, you know, it's something that needs to be addressed. And again, if those are the conversations that the movie uh, um, inspires, I don't know why that's a bad thing and what everybody's getting so upset about. Meanwhile, the U.S. military has warned service members to be on the lookout for potential shooters at screenings of the film. Joker is out in October. One small thing. Yeah. When you bring me out, can you introduce me as Joker? Now, this is, of course, an argument that people have been having for decades since a clockwork orange in the 70s to Reservoir Dogs in the 90s. Does film violence make people violent? It's difficult to prove that one causes the other, though many who dislike violence in cinema have tried. Now, for some analysis and expertise, I spoke to Dr. Maria Flood, a lecturer in film from Keele University in the United Kingdom. <laughs> kind of commentary is familiar from previous films. So I'm brought to mind of Fight Club, um, so that was the 1998 film, um, where it was also critiqued for its depiction of male violence. So it's really impossible to say whether violence in a film can lead to violence in real life. I think most people know the difference between reality and fiction. But do I think a film like this could potentially tip somebody or who is already leaning in, a, in the direction of extremist violence over the edge? Yes, it probably could. So it's not about whether we should tell the story of perpetrators, but how do we tell these stories? So do we glamorize them? Which reading a lot of the commentary about this film, it seems that this is the case and Joaquin Phoenix is obviously a hugely important um, and very beloved actor. So yeah, it's about how we tell the stories as well. 
I don't think that one film is really the issue. It's about a, a wider culture that in many ways glamorizes gun violence um, while simultaneously on a political level not doing enough to eradicate it, but also to create a society where people don't feel this call to violence or, or drawn to violence in this way. And a lot of that is about representations of masculinity as well. We have to question really our investment in these kind of images of spectacular violence and our investment in glamorizing figures like the Joker, who, as you say, is kind of an incel figure, a, a white supremacist figure, possibly.